Oh, good job. Keep going. Keep going. I see him wiggling. What is it? My name is Zachary McNaughton, and I am not a professional angler. I've been fishing for over 20 years, and the one thing that these years have taught me most is that I have a lot to learn. So let's meet some of Vermont's true master anglers, and together we'll discover some fishing techniques and explore the many species that this great state has to offer. On today's episode of Vermont Master Anglers, we're not going anywhere. We're headed down in the backyard to the beaver pond in order to catch some creek chubs. Creek chubs are often used as bait for catching a variety of different larger species. But today, we'll be catching these fish with a special permit in order to take them to the Montshire Museum for their schooling fish tank. Creek chubs are a common bait fish found all across Vermont in our beaver ponds and small, slow moving streams. In fact, just the other day we were at the Vermont State Fair and there's a little brook there that there's a bridge you walk over while you're on the fairgrounds and I noticed there are a whole bunch of creek chubs down in that teeny tiny little brook as well. So these are fish that are all around Vermont, um, certainly very prevalent in waters where you would find brook trout, um, especially slow moving warm waters such as beaver ponds. We're gonna be using slip floats with tiny trout magnet jigs. But instead of using the little worms that come with the trout magnets, we're gonna be using dyed corn. To make our bait, we'll start with a can of whole kernel corn and some kokanee corn dye. Here I have a recycled empty glass jar that I'll mix our bait in. Open the can of corn and pour the entire contents into the mixing jar. The instructions on the corn dye bottle say to mix one teaspoon of the dry powder in with the corn and let sit for 30 minutes. Once our corn dye is soaked into the corn for 30 minutes, we'll drain off all the liquids and refrigerate until we're ready to start fishing. It's mid-August and the water levels are relatively low in our beaver pond right now. That means the creek chubs have been forced out of all of the willow roots into the main water. This makes them extremely easy to target. Basically, all we'll need to do is get our slip float around any type of submerged cover and we'll catch one within a few minutes. This is a relatively small piece of corn here. Um, we were using larger pieces than that, but for the most part, you want to use the smaller corn. You'll notice that I've just barely skin hooked it. This allowed the minnow to come up, feel the corn, pull it into its mouth, and then it'll get the hook. And basically, you want to experiment with your lengths below the float. Right now, we have this. Um, it's about 13 or 14 inches below the float because these fish are out in the open water of the beaver dam and not tucked up in the brush. When they were up in the brush, um, I only had about six inches of line below the float so that I wasn't down in the roots of the plants, um, which would have been just a massive snag nightmare. On this type of fishing, be prepared to snag a lot. You know, we're using two pound test line right now. I could probably up this, um, but it'd become difficult to cast if it were too heavy. Uh, but yeah, I mean, that's basically it. These fish have small, delicate mouths, and because we're catching these for an aquarium, we've pinched the barbs off of all of our hooks in order to make the release into our bait bucket as, as easy and uh, the least amount of damage as possible. The creek chub is a small chub with a greenish-brown back, cream-colored size interrupted by horizontal black stripes running from the nose to the tail, and a white belly. The colors of the creek chub may vary depending on the color of the water they're living in. Creek chubs are in the minnow family and are not commonly used as a human food source. However, there are a few different catch and cook videos on YouTube and they claim that they are quite tasty. Creek chubs have been described as opportunists and carnivores. They consume many different food sources to survive, including fish, insects, and vegetation, amphipods, nymphs, larvae, and much, much more. Feeding habits of creek chubs are specific to the food that is available in the rivers and creeks where they live. But the main takeaway here is that they'll eat just about anything they can fit in their mouth. So as long as you're in the area where they are living and your tackle is sized appropriately, these fish are easy to catch. Creek chubs are used often for bait. They're fantastic bait fish, no spines, very small, uh, very similar to a ball fish, but even smaller. These characteristics also make them great for kid fishing, as there's literally nothing on the fish that can hurt a child. 
Though we didn't catch any during this outing, it's also quite common to catch small brook trout when targeting creek chubs. The creek chubs we're targeting today max out at about 4 or 5 inches in length. To catch these fish today, we're using one of those ugly stick combo kids rod and reel packages with the push button reel. This reel comes pre-spooled with 2 pound line. And I fell. Are you okay? Yeah. If I can get back up. <laughs> Daddy got the fish. Can I add that to your intro? Yeah. Next year's intro. This is an extremely easy technique that can be deployed all across Vermont in slow moving warm waters where creek chubs can be found. This is a great way to introduce children to fishing. The moment the bobber hits the water, if you don't have a bite within five to six seconds, I'll reel it in and then move the bait over just a little bit until I found the school. Creek chubs run in large groups of fish. So once you find them, you can cast in the same area for quite a while and have some pretty intense action. To keep my fish alive and healthy, I'm using an aerator in my bucket. This keeps plenty of oxygen in the water and helps the fish stay alive and healthier for longer. If you're fishing for creek chubs to use for bait, one quick thing to keep in mind is that they are jumpers. They can jump a couple feet in the air, so you'll want to make sure that you have a lid on your bucket. Also remember to check the bait laws. Currently in Vermont it's illegal to transport fish alive from one water body to another using a motor vehicle. We have a special permit today to move these fish to the Montshire Museum. Most of the chubs we caught today were in about two feet of water near submerged branches, brush, and logs. Even in small water systems, creek chubs have a lot of natural predators, so they'll be hugging tight to cover. The bottom of this entire area that I'm fishing is packed tightly with twigs that the beavers have pushed down to make an entry to their hut. As you can see here with the barbs removed from the hooks, dehooking the fish is an extremely easy process. These fish are catchable during the earlier months, but what you'll find is instead of being out in the main water body, they'll be pushed way up into those willow reeds. So you'll need to get close, get your bobber very close to the root system, and then you'll find the fish. They tuck down inside of the willow roots or whatever um, brush is growing in the body of water that you're using, fishing in. Uh, but they will tuck into that cover as tightly as possible. Sometimes an area is only about six inches in diameter where if your lure or your bait is not in that six inch diameter area, you're not gonna get a fish. But if you are in that six inch area, you could pull 10 or 15 chubs out of there in no time at all. So it's very important when the water's high that these fish know that they will push back up into the cover, way back into the edges of the beaver dam. But this time of year when we're in drought season and the water is very low, it's very easy to target them out into the open water. When the float first hits the water, the action of your bait sinking down will attract these creek chubs quite quickly. When they first hit, they often hit quite dramatically and will dunk the bobber and then it'll come back up again. It's important to be a little bit patient when doing this because if you try to set the hook during that initial dunk, most likely you're not gonna get the fish. What you're looking for is for the bobber to go down in the water and while shaking, it'll start moving. That means the fish really has the lure in their mouth and is starting to swim off. At that point, what I do is I just reel quickly. These hooks are very sharp and very small gauge wire, so they'll penetrate the fish's mouth pretty easily. So I'll start reeling, and the moment as I feel the wiggle of the fish, I might sweep forward just a tiny, tiny bit to set that hook, and then just reel as fast as I can. We don't have any barbs in these hooks, so it's really important to keep the fish moving and not let any slack in the line. One of the pieces of advice that I'll give you today that I kind of wish I had followed myself is that 
when creek chubs are schooled up, they will hit immediately. The second that bobber hits the water, if you don't have a fish, you're not in the right spot. But it's easy to overfish a spot. We stayed in one spot for quite a while today and pulled several fish there, and then the action stopped. Um, I kept fishing the same area, hoping the school would come back, but I just pressured it too much. So eventually, I moved about eight feet to the side and found the school again and was able to get into a lot more action. I wish I had not spent the time in between casting at the same spot when there were no fish there. So um, if you don't have a bite within the first four or five seconds of your bobber, your float hitting the water, then it's time to start fan casting again and figuring out where the school went to. Once you find the school, you'll get several fish out of it if you can keep getting the bait back into the water without any delay. hot but we got our creek chubs now we're heading up to the Mount Shire Museum to deliver them to the tanks special delivery hey there you are Well, I think I, I don't know exactly how many I have, but I'm hoping it's, I think it's more than 20. Yeah, well, that's all right, let's see. Once the fish have acclimated to their new environment and are successfully feeding, they'll be moved from the processing tank out to the schooling tank on the main floor. Here they'll complement the silver shiners nicely as the creek chubs tend to stick to the bottom of the tank while the shiners suspend in the middle. Thanks for watching this episode of Vermont Master Anglers. For more content, visit our Facebook page at Vermont Master Anglers. If you're watching us on YouTube, please like and subscribe.